Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. Don't forget to visit the Go Collect swag shop. And if you use my discount code Reggie, you can save yourself a couple of bucks. Also, don't forget to visit my channel here on YouTube, Reggie Collects, for an opportunity to win one of these cool books. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video, and I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to talk about so many awesome topics, including which version of Doctor Doom, if any, will appear in the MCU, some DC and Dark Horse comics that you may want to keep your eyes open for. We're going to talk about cameo appearance and first appearance, as well as the White Rabbit and some other oddball comics that are popping up on the scene and so much more. The very first book that we're going to talk about is Marvel Team Up issue number 131. And this is a book that we've spoken about before because it is the first appearance of the White Rabbit. And we were struggling to figure out why I have photos of the White Rabbit on my phone and why this book was on my radar. And now potentially we have a little bit of an answer. It seems that the White Rabbit has a toy out, an action figure from Marvel Legends, and potentially that is why there has been this interest in this specific book. Now, this isn't all that unusual, to be honest. We saw this happen several months ago with Darkhawk. When there was a toy that was released for Darkhawk, there was a tremendous amount of excitement around that, and people started to speculate that maybe we were going to see Darkhawk in the MCU. Fast forward several months, we now know that it is getting close, I think, to his 30th anniversary and Marvel is releasing some variants and one shots featuring Darkhawk. Is there a future for Darkhawk? Who knows? Is there a future for the White Rabbit? Who knows? But as our blogger points out, anything is possible. And we could literally see the White Rabbit go from an action figure at Target to having her own movie and her TV show. Like, it is possible. The next book on the list is Fast Willie Jackson, issue number one. And I actually know several people that actually have this book and they have it because they were big Archie fans. And the artist that worked on this comic, Gus Lamone, is actually an Archie artist. And so this book actually has some historical significance to it. And it's pretty easy to see why this book is on the list. There are three other books on this list, and I will encourage you all to check this one out. It will be linked down in the description because all of these are pretty odd and awesome all at the same time. One of the other books that I, I just want to touch on is associated with a pope. It is literally a comic that is written about a pope. And again, that is not an unusual thing because there are also comics that are based upon Mother Teresa. And so if you have a moment, you should absolutely check out this blog post. If you're into like obscure comics, odd comics, this is a blog post for you. If you caught last week's speculation video, you know that we spent some time talking about cameo versus first appearance. And in this week, we are going to talk about another post that has been submitted in by one of our bloggers. And the blogger does, in my opinion, a very solid job of laying out a case for Uncanny X-Men issue number 120 and 121. In the case of this blog post, the blogger is basically saying that issue 121 should actually have a higher value than it currently does versus issue 120. 120 is a cameo appearance, yet its value is incredibly high versus the full appearance in 121 of the team known as Alpha Flight. Two months ago, a CGC 9.8 copy of Uncanny X-Men issue number 120 sold for nearly $3,000. About a year ago, it was actually worth half that amount. Now contrast that to the first full appearance 
of the Alpha Flight team in issue number 121. In December, a CGC 9.8 copy of that book sold for roughly $1,200. And a year before that, that book was going for about half that amount. Now, if you take the time to actually look through these books, what you will see is that some aspects of the Alpha Flight team are represented in issue 120. But in many ways, it is more of a setup for the full reveal of that team in 121. Now, why does any of this matter? It matters for lots of different reasons, but one of the biggest is that Alpha Flight is rumored to be coming to the MCU. Now, who knows whether those rumors are true or not, but it is something to be aware of, especially if you believe those rumors. You have to decide where do you want to spend your money. The cameo appearance, which could be overvalued, or the undervalued issue number 121. It is generally accepted that DC Comics are not being fueled by speculation in the same way that the Marvel comics are being fueled by the MCU. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that there aren't some awesome DC comics that are worthy of you picking up. There are a lot of them. And our blogger actually does a pretty solid job of highlighting several books within one series that you may want to check out. And that series is none other than DC Comics Presents. And over the course of this blog post, the blogger touches on several different books and then the rationale as to why you may want to check them out. The very first book that is mentioned is the first issue, that being DC Comics Presents issue number one. And what makes this book really cool is that it is the conclusion of the fourth race between Superman and Flash. And I'm kind of sort of smiling here because I recently rewatched the Justice League movie on HBO Max and there was that scene where the two of them were racing and it's just a really cool piece of history. And like I said, it concludes, the fourth race actually concludes in issue number one. Another book that you may want to consider picking up is DC Comics Presents issue number 26. And this book is the first appearance of several characters, including Raven, Cyborg, and also Star Fox. And it is also the first introduction of the new Teens Titan team. Now, what makes this book really cool, in my opinion, is if you have seen the Titans TV show, this is a must-have book. It really is. That, that show is incredibly well done. It has been renewed for season three. We now know that Tim Drake and also Barbara Gordon are going to appear in season three. And if they continue the production value that has been seen in the first two seasons, I think we could see several more seasons of this show down the road, potentially with some additional characters being introduced. And so again, while these books are not being fueled by the movies and TV shows, I think that they are still really cool things. And so when I watched the show, I was very pleased to have this book in my collection, to be honest with you. One of the last books that is mentioned in this blog post is DC Comics Presents issue number 47. And this is actually the first comic book appearance of He-Man and Skeletor. And if you are a fan of Masters of the Universe, this is an awesome book to pick up. And a lot of people believe that this cartoon will eventually be rebooted in some way, shape or form. And if you believe that, Issue number 47 is a great book to have in your collection. Right now, Dark Horse properties and comics are all the rage, especially because what is happening with Star Wars right now. But there are several other titles out there that are from Dark Horse that you may also want to pay attention to. And some of these books may be located in dollar bins. The very first book that our blogger talks about is Creepy. And what the blogger says is that this title features great art and great writing within the horror genre that is just really, really awesome and top notch. 
the blogger highlights that there could be some opportunities for this title specifically because there are not a whole lot of them on the CGC census. In fact, there have basically been seven sales according to Go Collect, and there have been none for a 9.8. There is data, however, for a 9.6, and this book is trending at about $30. Next up, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Our blogger makes an argument here that potentially we will see a reboot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer at some point. And if that happens, there is one book that you may want to check out. Specifically, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 8, Issue Number 1. And this book has actually seen a big bump in price and presently hovers around $100 for a 9.8 copy. Our blogger goes on to talk about another book associated with Black Hammer, but you are going to have to click on the link in the description to get all the details around that book. Is now the time to invest in Defenders? That is the title and topic of this next blog post. And there are a lot of rumors out there that various characters that were in the Netflix series are going to reprise their role in the MCU at some point. There is rumor right now that Charlie Cox is actually going to reprise his role as Daredevil and will appear in the Spider-Man movie. And because of that, our blogger, because of the rumors, I should say, our blogger is asking the question as to whether now is the time to pick up the first appearances associated with the Defenders team before they actually appear in the MCU. And the blogger talks about the really expensive, really popular Daredevil issue number one. And certainly if you have the money, this is not a bad book to pick up, but it is also pretty hot right now. The same potentially could be said for Marvel premiere issue number 15, the first appearance of Iron Fist, who is rumored to appear in the Shang-Chi movie. Now, if you go to the other end of the spectrum, there are a few other defenders that have books, first appearances, that are a little cooler because there are not as many rumors out there around them reprising their role. And we are specifically speaking about Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones had her first appearance in Alias issue number one. And of course, last but not least, there is Luke Cage who first appeared in Heroes for Hire issue number one. And again, there potentially is going to come a time when these characters come back to the MCU because of how well the Netflix series was received. It would be silly of Marvel to not do something with these characters in the future. And potentially, now could be the time to pick these books up. So I'm going to be honest with you. There are some rumors out there that Dean, Big Brother, Almighty, Giancarlo Espinito will be donning the mask of Doctor Doom. If that happens, I will be over the moon because I have enjoyed this actor since he appeared in Spike Lee's School Days back in the day. And he's done a lot of other stuff since then, but I still remember him as Dean Big Brother Almighty. But setting those rumors aside, there are a lot of people out there that are speculating that Doctor Doom will come to the MCU. There are folks that are saying that he is going to come along with the Fantastic Four, but because of what happened with Fox, others believe he may appear in a few different uh, settings. And so this last blog post actually looks at some of those uh, iterations of Dr. Doom that we could potentially see. And yeah, we could see him come in via the Fantastic Four, but because he is part of the dark arts, we could actually see him do something with magic. And we saw that actually play out in the graphic novel, Dr. Strange and Dr. Doom, Triumph and Torment. And in this graphic novel, we see the doctors team up to battle Mephisto in order to save Dr. Doom's mother. There is another version of Dr. Doom that we might see specifically when he became the infamous Iron Man. Like 
Doom, in secret, literally built his own Iron Man suit and became Iron Man for a short period of time. And then there was also the time when he gained godlike powers and became God Emperor Doom. So I don't know which version of Doom we are going to see, but we're going to see Doom at some point in the MCU. And if you believe this to be true, this blog post may be one that you want to take a look at because it is interesting and it is also linked down in the description. So there we have it. We have reached the end of another recap. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and then tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.